Yeah, we have this actually. This is what I want to talk about just briefly because they're going to come out very, very soon. So, as you guys are aware, I am a, I'm now a very, what, somewhat retired sneakerhead. Um, there was a time in my life where I had more than 300 shoes or so, um, especially when I used to work, you know, in various sneaker stores across the London scene, you know, was an avid um, member, de determined, devoted, passionate member of the London or the UK sneaker community, specifically Crooked Tongues, where I run the best forums that ever existed in the history of man. Um, and just, you know, ob obsessively, obsessed, obsessively committed myself to collecting and buying as many trainers as I could in the shorter space of time and just kind of diving on deep in that whole entire scene and making it my life's work to get uh, hold as many rare shoes as I could in it. And of course, over time, that stuff changes, you get older. Um, this And again, the, 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 the way of buying stuff keeps changing changing um, it gets difficult to buy the things that you want and you just get a bit disillusioned in it but you still maintain that love for shoes especially the the grails especially the kind of um, wardrobe staples that you can kind of mix up into the outfits I wear nowadays because I don't really wear conventional sneakerhead outfits that I used to wear back in the day right baseball cap t-shirts hoodies jeans a particular style right that you could always fit a shoe in now my, my outfits kind of you know are a bit I would say uh have a bit more range to them so it's difficult to just insert a sneaker in any outfit that you're wearing it has to kind of make sense but one of the staples i think is a you know very versatile shoe and can go just about anything i have in my wardrobe now is the mx95 for again one of my maybe top five sneakers i'd say yes yeah, in my top five right mx air max 90 air force one jordan four mx95 and then what else will be in my top that's four so far but anyway definitely in my top five of shoes um and it's coming out um, end of the month the air max 95 neon one of my favorite colorways and it's just a beautiful shoe man like it's just an absolutely gorgeous shoe like i remember when i first saw them it must have been a scan from one of those japanese sneaker magazines right and um uh boon or whatever it was called what was it uh atmos had one too there was a few but i remember seeing them in one of those shoots they have where they sort of have a list of a uh, sort of a grid full of just shoes all really tightly laced um code or jp exclusive some grs whatever it may be and they just have like every single i wish i could find a scan that like every single color variant variation of an mx95 especially it will be good to find them now, especially to give me an insight or an idea on what to what to do when it comes to doing them on ID. Because I find the Air Max 90 silhouette one of the most difficult to sort of design on Nike ID or the what they call it now, uh, Nike Bios or whatever it's called now, some gay name, but whatever it's called now, I, I find it very difficult to design on this um, on this shoe on this shape. There's so many panels; it's just difficult to get the color combinations right. But using some of the references from all the other old um, you know colorways that they did in the past is a really good launching pad but in general i love the shape i love everything about the shoe i think again it works really well dressed up dressed down um combats you know that kind of camo fatigue pants bdu you see those kind of being worn a lot in shoots of mx 95s back in the day you see a lot of people wearing shorts uh, kind of like an acg is kind of flavor really short short bright colors contrasting socks works really well in the uk there was a big culture of like what do you call them rude boys in the uk who used to wear these i remember that was back in it maybe even before that were they sort of like the that's what you'd prefer like the ukg um, which means uk garage sort of heads right who would go to like raves wearing versace shirts armani shirts ben sherman shirts with great blue jeans and a pair of mx 95s right kind of you know um laced very loosely and that was the vibe that everyone had you know a couple of buttons undone um a nice little gold cap a sovereign ring just doing the damn thing and that was a vibe i loved it um you know before the designer sneaker thing came in and just kind of killed the scene in people's creativity but i love the shoe as well because it's i think i might say it's one of the a few nike shoes that were specifically designed without the smoosh in mind i think the swoosh was a kind of a boardroom level uh, d d decision to swap to place the swoosh on the back of the hill from what i remember originally the, the original designer for the 95 wanted it just to be like a you know completely tonal no swoosh no real branding on the outside and that would end up because you've got a bit of branding on the tongue you know with the mx whatever it may be but imagine what they would have looked like just without the actual swoosh on the side if they did come out that way but again a classic shoe um that's due to come out at the end of the month like you can't go wrong with a neon 95 um, i've had a few pairs over the years i had an og pair that was crumbled on me now the nowadays the bubble is sort of kind of been um 
purposely, sh- I wouldn't say shrunken, but maybe enclosed. The old bubbles used to protrude out a little bit more, but they used to pop um, and burst over time and yellow and all that sort of stuff. And I guess from a kind of a quality standards point of view, Nike changed it and then started to either make the bubbles smaller or they encased them more with the midsole so that it covers more of it. I did read, I remember seeing on a forum somewhere, somebody, some guy decided to take a scalpel to the midsole to expose more of the actual bubble itself, like cutting it away, which was wild because, you know, one false move and you could pop the bubble itself and the shoe is rendered uh, useless at that point. But again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shoe. Um, from Hypebeast is the following. It's been 25 years since Nike. I don't know why they put in a stock um, listing them. Nike has a bit gay. Um, Seminole MS95 Neon made its retail debut in 1995. So the swoosh is honoring a quarter century of the Neon with a true to the original re release. Designed by Sergio Lozano, of course, Italian. That's why it's really big over there. And the 97 as well. I'm not sure if 97 is I'm Italian. I'm not sure. But it doesn't matter. Um, it's inspired by the human anatomy. The Neon was an aspirational pack. Peak sort of Nike's um, 90s Air Max footwear to many. Da, 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 da. and it was their favorite mx90 ever um the uppers are centered around a wavy anatomy inspired side panels with a grayscale fade starting with light tones um, on the top before shifting to dark on the bottom there's also multiple dashes of it ep- the eponymous neon present on the eyelet small hill swoosh and circular tongue um the nike max 95 has been reported to come out on the 17th which is what i thought right so i put my name through on the end launch site but now it's been updated to the 30th which is great do you know I mean so end of the month it's going to be coming out very very soon so definitely keep you abreast and eye on that one again one of my favorite shoes i absolutely love everything about the ms95 in celebration of the 21st anniversary it's back look at that absolutely gorgeous you can't go wrong with ms95 and then to kind of commemorate it they put together this really cool film um seven store um it's a liverpool based uh retail store i've not really heard of them but this um, actual film itself is absolutely sick man so i'm gonna play a bit of it for you now put the sound a bit low there so it doesn't burst your eardrums get on big screen and be sh- sit up webs what did someone call them? The Swiss Army Web? Every skull, so must have had a pair of ones. Well better. You saved everything that you had to make sure you could bag a pair of them. You haven't got a scouse password in the one channel. Classic ones are the ones. Well better. Where, what, uh, question Where would the Air Max, Air Max range be without Europe? We made Air Maxes, innit? Because I don't think the US cared about Air Maxes as much as we did. Like we absolutely adore the Air Maxes. Like there's no Air Max in the UK or in the Europe, especially. I think of, you know, the UK, I think of Netherlands, I think of France, parts of Spain. We're in love with Air Maxes, even Eastern Europe. Like those guys, you know, they love a good Air Max. Like we absolutely love Air Maxes. It would be cool if Nike could see that and maybe make a few more retros out of true to the originals without the annoying banana foot thing, toe box thing that always occurs and some of the retros they put out. Um, making actual retros that look like, like one of the retros that has actually been a travesty to the scene to the community and to sneak ahead the worldwide i think still that hurts my soul two air maxes the air stab and the air max light like that retro those two retros of those two shoes it still hurts my heart how fuck they got them like i think of how beautiful the air max structure was that first came out the first colorway that i got sort of like the black white and teal colorway and then you know the subsequent ones were absolutely dog shit but that first one i got was beautiful they even had the sort of like papery mesh toe box thing done right but the MX and light is so bad compared to the OG. So horrible. Um, I, I don't. And again, people always say, "Oh, the tooling. They don't know how to have the right molds." The years have gone by. It's like I'm sorry. They're a billion dollar company, Nike, right? Like they they can make it. They, they can remake tooling. Um, they can get a pair of archive shoes and basically deconstruct them, like you know these um replica factories are doing in China. Like. It, there is no excuse now when you see what adidas are doing with their sort of like 80s um capsule things that they yeah well the 80s retros they put out right they've got i think i saw a forum the other day that was superb obviously the uh, the superstar 80s are great the campuses they're great um they're able to kind of recreate that shape that silhouette expertly done right reverse engineering whatever it may be and again 
Lauren's telling you to sell those shoes for fifty pounds. I'm more than willing, as Adidas do, they put a bit of a markup on their sort of like ones that are done to OG standards that are sold specifically to sneakerheads who care about the box, um, the label, the colours, whatever, the midsole, um, you know, material and composition. Like slap a bit of extra money on that. Put you know, a hundred pound extra on top of it. Sneakerheads will blap it up. Like you're telling me if they brought out a Air Max one, right? In the you know, especially the MX1 in like the white and red, white and blue, white and green, black on black colorway to spec of the original MX ones that came out back in the day with the actual bigger bubble, the exposed bit on the inside, you know, the mesh on the inside, the mesh tongue. Do you really think they wouldn't sell for $200, 250 You won't tell me like actual MX aficionados wouldn't buy that up. I'd buy up the entire store, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, but what can you do? I've got a pair of the light blue OG ones, and they are terrible. Because you knew once you wore them, you were a part of the texture, the fabric of what makes the city express itself. They've got to be branded as like Liverpool shoe. And they weigh £110 back in the day, that's what it was. And that name still lives on, 110s, it still lives on. More expensive, that's what the army kids want to well better. The lids in school and that always had one tens. If you didn't dress like that, you'd get it ripped out of you. The fighting spirit of a massive part of being a scouser. You are taught to fight for everything, fight for yourself, fight for what's right. right, 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 right. You know, it's pride, isn't it? All, all comes down to scout pride. Tarnished by stereotypes, mad, isn't it? Really? Oh. Well, better. We've worn tech fleeces, Nike Wives, Air Max 110s since back in the day. As long as I remember, Sick. I've always wanted a pair of Air Max on my feet. Street standard. You know, why shouldn't you have nice things? Why shouldn't you dress in a nice way? Well, better. What a great video, man. 110s. Awesome. But yeah, let's um, hopefully, hopefully the Nike sneaker gods decide to that I'm um, worthy enough to have a pair when they, you know, when the raffle gets drawn at launch at end. And if not, then I have to succumb to purchasing one in the aftermarket, a place like, you know, StockX, whatever else they may be. Because unfortunately, sneaker brands don't want us to own shoes. <laughs> and then and just to cap it all off, look at the demand, right? This is from the Liverpool Echo. Um, police called to size after hundreds queue for one day. At MS95 neon sale, like great to see in it. Such an iconic shoe. First launch, I think this is a great activation actually from Nike deciding to first launch it in store at size in Liverpool. Um, of, of, of course, sizes in a flipping mum and pop independent store, don't get me wrong, but you know, it's a fixture of the sneakers, sneaker world scene at the moment. They do a good job at sort of bridging the gap, I, I feel, between like um, tier zero, you know uh one away places to like the J I won't say JD Sports, but they do a good job of kind of filling that niche, right? That kind of little gap in between that sort of like foot patrol esque kind of store where they're able to carry some of the more limited shoes but also able to carry stuff that, you know, that are a little bit above that level. Things that you might find in like a designer store, you know, one of those kind of multi brand stores like um, Essence or whatever. So it says here, um, crowds of shoppers were dispersed this morning after hundreds of people queued up outside of size, right? It's really refreshing to see queues in real life, not actual people using bots online to buy up the entire stock and then post them on Instagram. Um, it says it is for about 100, 400 people gathered to get in line for MS95 OG Neon release. The trainer release is arguably the most anticipated shoe release of the year, as this particular Neon colorway trainer hasn't been available in OG form for years. Yeah, true. The last one I got must have been 2014, I'm going to say. At a stretch of just out there randomly 2014 that might have been last time i got up here um was it 2014 let me see if i can get a pair i'll see if i got a picture of myself actually wearing them because i remember it has to be 2014 let me see before i move on here i think it's 2014 let's go here you 
got my flicker and see if I got a fit of myself back in the day wearing a pair. I'm pretty sure I do. I'm, I think I'm wearing them with a pair of double tap BDUs. Those were the vibe back in the day. They still probably the vibe still now in it because um, what you call it, combat pants or whatever they what do you, what do you call them, combat pants. Yeah, they've come back into vogue now at the moment. Everyone's wearing um, some form of pants with pockets all over them. So I think I've got a picture. I've got over 260 pictures of fits. That's how you know I was going ham back in the day. So I've got, I think I might have an image of me wearing a pair of 95. See if I can find it. Oh, I've got a pair of me wearing a pair of structures. You want to see that? There we go. Let's see if I can find it. Yep, look at that. Nike Air structures, right? Back in the day, where was that? That was uploaded 2008. OG in the thing, mate. You know what I mean? Representing. Next, let's see if I can get that A95 image of me. Let's see if I can find that one. Cool, you got the pair. Oops, got a pair of structures. See if I can find the other thing. Ba 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 ba. Got a pair of Air Max. Oh, I got this. Let me let me have on another tabs and so I'll show you this. This is the situation. This is the vibe back in the day. I wonder how much these are worth. Actually, I got a pair of these two that I'll show you guys here that I wore. See that one? Where's a pair of ninety fives? I have a, a fit. Yeah, there you go. You had a fit of me wearing ninety fives. The fit is a bit shit. Don't get me wrong. It's a little bit weak, so don't laugh at me. But regardless, I've still got a pair. I think that's the last pair of ninety fives I had in my collection that I must have either sold or gave away. I'm not very sure. I've got another fit too. Where? Yeah, let's let's do these two. These are probably good examples of the Air Max ninety five loving back in the day. Oops. So yeah, so there's a image of me here wearing a pair of this must have been two yes, 2007 at the Nike offices. I think they're in Carnaby Street or something back in the day. So there's me wearing a pair of Air Max 95s that I designed on Nike ID, kind of copying the same colorway of the sort of what they call is it Concords or I forgot the name of it, but there's a women's pair of Air Max 90s that came out at the same time as the infrareds, but they don't usually come in men's size. They don't usually come in a size above a UK nine and a half, which is a women's 13. So I decided to kind of copy that colorway on ID. Of course, I've got my hundreds jeans on hundreds and Funder collab t-shirt, uh, Mighty Ducks <laughs> snapback and some nondescript hoodie. Um, that was a funny one. Then I've got the, well, these Hunter Dunks, right? Yeah, or uh, yeah, half Hunter Dunks. Not Dunker Speeds, I wonder what these are worth now. I don't have them anymore with me, but this is what, 2000 and what, 2007 again? Swag, swag, swag. <laughs> and then there's a picture of me here wearing a pair of 95s for some reason with a uh, Boca Juniors top. I don't know why, don't ask, but that's the vibe, yeah? Doing the corner pose that everyone used to love on the interwebs. <laughs> that's me in 2008. And I guess lastly, another image of me wearing a pair of 95s. The uh, last one's own. 2008 then, even later. So, so you can see the BDUs. Got my New York thing t-shirt on and the customary rosary. And there's the MX 95s. I love them. They're one of my favorite shoes. I can't wait to get another one in 2009. With the vibe, bruv. So I can't wait to get another pair, hopefully very soon. So hopefully the thing, the, the gods shine on me and I'm able to get a pair. So let's see. Let's see.